It's been said that bad news should be delivered at the earliest possible occasion and in the greatest possible detail. Here we go. This is Nut and Fancy. This is the Nut and Fancy project that you found on YouTube, maybe other websites later on. And my job is to be a consumer advocate for you. The knife buyer, the gun buyer, the tactical gear user, the outdoor gear user. You will see me as years go by continue to flesh out my playlists in an attempt to give you the best information I can to prevent you making some dumb purchase decisions and being very disappointed in your decisions. I'm going to classify as designed right now the Cold Steel Pocket Bushman as a broken design. This flies in the face, no doubt, in, uh, against probably popular forum uh, groupthink, but I don't go to the forums, and I just do my own thing. I'll give you my own takes. I don't copy anybody, and I'll row my own boat in my own direction on the river, so to speak. And the reason I do that is because I have to have integrity. If I don't have integrity in the project, what good is it? I've told you that before in my other videos, and you will see, if you haven't already detected that in my videos, that truly I am beholden to no company. Not Cold Steel, not Benchmade, not Kershaw, not Rat Cutlery, not any gun company, Ruger, Sig, Glock. I'm beholden to no one except you, my viewers. As long as my videos are popular, as long as you continue to click on my advertiser, advertiser's links, and they are just kind of mechanically paired with my videos, I don't think they even know what I talk about, then the project rolls on and I will continue to shoot straight and tell the truth and here we go with Pocket Bushman. I highly recommend you avoid this design until it is fixed. Here is why. I'm going to get to some good things about the Pocket Bushman as best I can but let me get this bad news out of the way that makes this deal a showstopper for nothing fancy. Look at the lock mechanism in the diagram. There is much hoopla and bragging done by Cold Steel about how their RAM safe lock works. By the way, I'm going to use the excellent Kershaw Skyline as my pointer today. Yes, you'll see a review on that. And okay, I'm not going to go into any details. It just basically involves this RAM going against the spine of the knife and locking it into position. They talk about how it's pretty much impossible for it to fold once it's actuated. Hmm, that's interesting. But how does this little RAM system work? Huh, looking here, bam, that's how it works. There's a little spring in there, see that? Here's what happened, and this is why this design is broken until Cold Steel fixes it, which I assume they will once the word of this gets out. As I was actuating and practicing with the Cold Steel Bushman, for those of you who don't know, the way you open it is by pulling this lanyard, pulling that ram out, and then you can extend the blade. Then, the spring tension as you open the blade will push it into position and the blade locks. Oops, I've already revealed my secret. Hmm, let's pretend that just didn't happen. Okay, so let's say I did that. Okay, once again, let me review that. That I want to close the knife again. The way we're going to operate it, if it's working, is to pull the lanyard, open the blade, and then spring tension supposedly puts it back in. It is not a fast deploying knife. It's not fast to open when it's working, or nor is it fast to close when it's working. Um, because this is a very, it was a very strong, I'm kind of giving you hints to what's the problem here. It, it was a very strong spring that powers this mechanism, and you have to overcome it. It's a two-handed knife design. Now, some guys will say, oh, I know how to do that one-handed. I do it all the time. No. Uh, I mean, if you want to, go ahead. I think it's unsafe. And also, and Cold Steel is very clear, when you fold this knife, get your fingers out of the way, and you have to fold it like so. Okay, again, these are other details. Back to the lock mechanism. The way I was finding that the, to best open the Cold Steel Bushman is two-handed. Grasp the lanyard, pull on the, the rear of the locking mechanism, and extend the blade. Okay, granted, it's a two-handed procedure. You know it's not a fast knife. I could live with it. Now, in doing so and in practicing, I found that I was able to rapidly do it two hands as I practiced it by yanking this back and extending. 
guess what happened? As I yanked with my off hand, which for me is my left hand, okay, I'm right-handed obviously, I pulled this and compressed the spring, not knowing that, guess what, there is no stop, there is no retention to the plunging mechanism. I compress the spring, and no, I'm not He-Man or anything, but I compressed the spring so much, the lever popped out of the handle, just like you see here, and as that spring rotated in this groove, it got wrenched and it bent. And it happened in a blink of an eye. It just went doink. Next thing I know, I have a knife that at first glance has to be put back together. I'm like, uh, okay, that sucks. Huh. That really sucks. So I go, well, let me pull that, that plunger mechanism out. Okay. And so I'm looking at this spring, and this is what I was faced with when it came out. See that spring, how it's kinked? That happened when that happened, and it happened instantaneously. It's not something you can predict. Remember, I'm just pulling on it quickly to actuate the mechanism, extend the blade, boom, pops out, goes at an angle, spring is instantaneously kinked. Just like that. Okay, so I say, well, maybe I can put it back together. But I've had enough experience with springs to know once it looks like that, you're pretty much done. That is a spring that is going to be non-functional. It's got a kink in it. It does not work anymore. Well, I said, well, but maybe I'm wrong. Let me try it anyhow. Okay, so I attempted to put the knife back together. And there's your retention pin right here. So I put that in like this. Put the spring back in. And I'll attempt to do it and show you how I did it. Okay, so there's how it would be reassembled. And then the, the notion would be to pull that back enough to recompress the spring and reinsert the plunging bar underneath the lock again, or underneath the blade. You see what I'm saying? But guess what? Once that kink is in there, even if you try very hard, you will not be able to compress that spring and get it back in. The knife is non-functioning, and it is completely broke. And I challenge anyone to say otherwise. That is a fact of the design of the Cold Steel Bushman as it stands in March 2009. And to me, it is an absolute showstopper. Do not weigh in on the comments and say, well, yeah, you, you pulled that back too hard. You know, you should have you should have pulled it, you know, just a little bit, and then you wouldn't have broke the knife. No, bull crap. I don't buy that at all. This is marketed as a very tough knife, and any manufacturer that makes a knife and it marks it markets itself as a very tough knife, I'm gonna hold them to it. Okay, let's read the copy on the Cold Steel Bushman. While it's physically impossible for any folding knife to ever match the strength and rigidity of a fixed blade, we believe our pocket Bushman with its new patent pending lock is close to hitting the mark. So what they're telling us is this design is as strong or nearly as strong as a fixed blade design. Now that may be the case when the lock is extended and it's actuated and it is in the spine of the knife. And indeed, once it was there, it did seem very strong. When the spring was pushing it in there, I had no problems with that. But if the locking mechanism itself is so delicate so as to be broken in what I consider to be normal use, which I was doing, the design is broken. Plain and simple. So now I have a non-functioning Cold Steel Bushman knife. No doubt I'll send it back to Cold Steel. No doubt I'll get a brand new pocket Bushman, and no doubt I'll be a little bit wiser as to the faults of the design. Okay, And I went down into what I consider a relatively expansive spring collection trying to find a spring to replace this. Not so easy. Here's why. It is a very strong spring and it has to be for that lock mechanism. And it's very narrow in profile. I didn't find any of my extra gun springs that matched it. I didn't find any of my spring collection that can match it. So I ask you, if you have a cold steel Bushman and you opted to take it out in the woods that day, and let's say you were just under a little bit of stress and you did what I did, maybe not no stress. Let's just say you don't think and you yank that plunging bar back, it flips out, bends a spring just like happened to me. Now what do you do? Okay, here's what I would do. Obviously, I would put this back in without a lock or a spring mechanism. 
and then I would probably duct tape this in. Okay, so at least it'd be pushed in there, and I'd duct tape that, and I would have a functioning knife. As long as this plunging bar is pushed forward, the blade is locked in position. Okay, so I guess that we could do a workaround, truth be told, but it, overall the knife is broken. Wouldn't you agree? Busted. Isn't it funny how the littlest and the smallest of things can sometimes be the unraveling for what would otherwise be an awesome design? How would we cure this? Cold Steel, if you watch this, and I know you will, you need to, and Andrew Demko, are you the one that designed this? Well, good design, but you need to put a retention on that. What, you know, like me, I didn't feel like I pulled that that hard. I'm just compressing the spring. Oh, I compressed it so much that I brought it back all the way out of battery from the hilt of the knife and boink out it comes there needs to be a retention mechanism either here or here probably around this area probably a cross bolt in the plunger that prevents you from over extending the plunger mechanism pretty simple to do I would think it would be along the lines of what Kershaw does with their lock mechanisms make a little allen head there make it so you can tighten it well not tighten it but remove it if you have to for cleaning the knife don't make it permanent because we always want to be able to take our knives apart but a simple cross bar and slot in that plunger mechanism and this is just off the cuff it could be something else but that lock bar has to be retained I'll be honest I was disappointed uh, not disappointed and shocked and this has happened before with certain designs you see me knives break and I'll tell you you know the skinny on it otherwise and I'm just going to go ahead and give you the what I consider good points of the pocket Bushman if I'll say it again if that lock mechanism was fixed good points are I like that blade it's made out of 4116 corrupt stainless steel probably not the best edge holding stainless in the world but uh, sufficient easy to, easy enough to sharpen I love the flat grinding on it that's good it's got a really nice clip blade shaped stone washed finish all of those are really good things about the pocket Bushman has a good thumb stud I found that the thumb stud was adequate it's not as terrorist and as um, tractionable as I would like good stamping on the tang the stainless steel handle while I remain not a fan for the reasons I just told you at the beginning of the vid is very narrow. That makes it easy to carry. It's a pretty narrow package to carry, at least width-wise. Those are all good attributes. With the lock in position, assuming nothing else breaks, it's a strong knife. At least it appears to be, and I would really like to take it out and thump on it in the Nut and Fancy Knife Clinic. I mean really thump on it. Split wood, see if it can chop down logs and stuff by hammering it through. That would be fun, don't you think? Well, you've got to have a functioning knife for that to happen. Adjustable pivot point, that's good. Pocket clip, hey, that's decent. And for once, Cold Steel didn't screw it up by putting anything underneath the pocket clip. You know how they do that? High, you know, high traction material under the pocket clip is never advised, Cold Steel. It's uh, pretty much not advised. It tears up your pants, makes it hard to insert and extract. Not good. But the pocket clip itself is nice and is anchored properly. No problem with the lock mechanism as far as the operation goes. And I'm saying I'm pretending that it's fixed here. You know, it, it is a two-handed knife. I spoke to that already. Uh, it's not a quick deploying blade, but this is pretty much marketed as a survival knife, is it not? A backup survival blade. Hey, that's how I'm looking at it. You know, if I want a faster blade, you know, I'll I'll get something else. You know, maybe Cold Steel Recon 1. You know, there's a lot of different options that you could have. Um, and it doesn't have to be the Pocket Bushman if you're looking for a defensive blade. In fact, again, assuming that the plunger lock mechanism is fixed, I would not recommend this as a defensive blade. It's two-handed. You don't want a two-handed knife. What if you're injured with the other hand? Uh, you know, I just wouldn't do it. How about value? Value is good. Like I said, $21, a little bit more, a little bit less, depending where you go. Times may change, may be more expensive, less expensive, may be discontinued. Huh. That's a factor, but high value knife. There's not a lot that can compete with this. How about the weight? 
Yes, it's stainless steel handled and it's a 6.1 ounce blade. That's pretty heavy. But like I said, if I get something for that weight, again, we're assuming that that compression spring and the lock are fixed. If I get something for that weight, then I'm willing to take more weight. And that's actually a pretty big blade. That's a four and a half inch flat ground stainless blade. So suddenly that six ounces doesn't look too, too uh, heavy to me. You know what I'm saying? Plus it's very thin. That makes it easy to carry. And being as affordable as it is, you know, thrash on it. Thrash on it. I think the looks are adequate. It's got that matte stainless steel finish on it. And like I said, that blade is particularly good looking. I love that stone wash finish on the 4116 steel blade. I would like to see jimping up there. Is that new? Nope, I've always said that. Put some jimping right there, cold steel. Even if you had to add a few dollars of expense, it sure would be nice. Right now, it's as smooth as a baby's butt. No traction. Um, you could do certain things with a handle. You might wrap it in some A-grip material, maybe some skateboard tape. I probably wouldn't recommend that. It'd tear your pocket up. But you could do a couple things with it. You could dirt coat it, give it a different color. But all of that pretty much is for naught, isn't it? When the thing's busted. I would say so. Well, that's my preliminary review. That's fancy. I hope they fix this design. It holds promise, and it probably wouldn't be a hard thing to do. Keeping it real, giving you the straight skinny, you probably won't hear anywhere else. This is nothing fancy. Signing off with a big thumbs down on the current pocket Bushman. Out.